Hi guys, Kevin here. We're in the kitchen garden today and I'm getting ready to mulch the vegetable beds. But before I mulch them, I wanted to first show you my watering system and then I wanted to give you an overview of the garden to show you what's shaking now that the season is well underway. And let me tell you, it is hot and hazy and humid today. Whoa. Yeah, so before I had a watering system installed, I used to set an oscillating sprinkler on this urn and let it run, you know, go back and forth and back and forth for three to four hours twice a week. And what I was doing was watering the pathways thoroughly and watering the garden beds only modestly. So it was a real waste of water. Let me show you how the system works now. So my contractor installed this four hose gadget. And there is a lever for each hose. And each hose runs to one bed. I can control the, here are the valves, and I can control the water flow to the beds or I can even choose not to water one of the beds. So it's very convenient. And then the hoses, these are heavy duty hoses, they run under the pathway and then they come up into the corner. He went under each bed and up into a corner can't really see here because this lovage plant is in the way. And then he attached soaker hoses by using these plastic tees right here. So here I have broccoli growing and he's got a line for each row of broccoli. So there's one, two, three, four lines here. Actually there are five lines. There's one on this side as well. And here are the four beds that are watered via that contraption I showed you. And then for these central beds, sorry, my tripod is in the way here. For these four narrow central beds, I'll walk around. He did the same thing, hooking up this gadget. So I have four hoses here. I also have a drip line that goes to the urn in case I want to put a plant over there. And then he did the same for these four beds. And here is the hookup right here. Yeah, so when I want to water, I simply use this timer, which is you know, not computerized, there's nothing fancy about it, therefore there's <laughs> practically nothing to break. And I can set this, let's see, I'm going to set it for 30 minutes right now. And then I'll show you how the hoses are dripping. So the hoses drip just where the plants need moisture, and that is at the roots. So let's have a look at the garden. Here's that first cattle panel trellis that I set up. I filmed the video for you, so if you want to watch it, I will post the link up top or down below. And I found that I loved this trellis so much that I, that I went ahead and installed another over here. This is for pole beans. And I love this one so much that I got yet another cattle panel and installed it here. And this is for butternut squash. This first panel is also for butternut squash. And speaking of pole beans, I planted mine probably too early. I planted them like 12 days ago when the nights were still pretty chilly and as of two days ago nothing had germinated. Suddenly yesterday I saw the little stems 
curling upward, meaning I had some germination. And then they grew overnight to, oh, they're about two inches tall now. So I'm delighted. And something's been chewing this leaf. Uh-oh. Oh, here's another pulping. Here it is. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. There's so much glare up here, I don't even know if you can see what I see. Anyway, I have nine pole beans planted on either side of this panel. And the idea is that the beans will grow up and over the top. And from what I've seen in pictures on Pinterest, the beans tend to actually form inside, you know, in the shady part uh, underneath the trellis, so they're very easy to harvest. Pluck! Ditto for the uh, winter squash, the butternut squash over here. It's going to grow up and over. I have one plant on either side. Also in this bed, since every garden needs to have some flowers, I have some dwarf snapdragons. And these will be terrific for small table arrangements. This one's sort of a pinkish rose, and then we have yellow. It's very cheerful looking. And this one, is this two plants? I think it is two plants. So there's yellow, and then there's this sort of orange, orangish colored one. And in this other bed, I'm just crawling on my knees, I have a rose-colored snapdragon, a pinkish rose, and I guess we'd call this one magenta. Okay, and here's one of the 4x8 raised beds. You can see the soaker hoses, which I will be covering with mulch, and I have good storage onions growing here in the front and then I have more onions in another bed and broccoli I planted lots and lots of broccoli this year because I'm planning to blanch and freeze it for winter this next bed contains my garlic this is hardnet garlic, so it will make garlic scapes in probably two or three weeks' time. I planted the uh, bulbs last fall. And the garlic scapes make the best pesto in the world. It's right up there with chai of pesto. And at the rear of the bed is uh, Brussels sprouts. And I will be staking them. And here's that butternut squash down here, just beginning its career. And here is the tomato bed with the seven foot tall tomato trellis. I made a video of this trellis, or how to build it, about a month ago. So if you want to watch that, I will link it either above or below. And the tomatoes are doing very well. Here's San Marzano. And it is now tall enough for me to tie to this stake. And we will talk more about tomatoes as the season progresses because I want to show you how to remove suckers and how to tie the vines. Here's the asparagus patch that was started five years ago and we harvested quite a lot of asparagus early on this season and it's so sweet and delicious when it's freshly snipped from the garden. Now I'm letting the plants create their ferns. And in this bed I have yet more broccoli and more Brussels sprouts which again I will stake. And here's that massive love age plant, which really deserves its very own video. I'm going to be cutting this back 
very soon and then it will regrow itself during the remainder of the growing season. This bed contains more onions and one of the varieties is called red carpet. It's terrific for storing. I planted it last year too and believe it or not I am still eating those onions. They're really good keepers. I also have a yellow storage onion in here but I've forgotten its name. At the front of the bed more Brussels sprouts. And here's the potato bed, which I've already mulched. And I will continue to add mulch, uh, which is also known as hilling the potatoes. That way I won't have any green spuds. Yeah, the potatoes are doing just beautifully. And here's the pergola at the rear of the garden with two chairs. And I'm going to sit in one of them because it's shady there. Ah, much better. Yeah, I told you it was hot and humid here today, and guess what? Now it's starting to rain. Some days you just can't win. Uh, anyway, I have lots more gardening and cooking videos coming up, so I hope you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel and tap the little bell icon so you can receive notifications whenever I upload something new. Also, please tell me about your own garden. I'd love to hear about the plants you're growing and I'd really like to know how you manage watering your garden. Uh, whether you use soaker hoses or drip lines or uh, maybe you use, as I did for so many years, an oscillating sprinkler. And I guess that's all. I better get inside. Yeah, it's really starting to rain. So take good care of yourself, and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.